What's up, model makers? It's time for another video in my model making fundamentals series. Um, that makes it sound really serious, but it's not. It's just stuff that I've learned that I'm trying to pass on to other guys who are in the learning curve. Um, and again, none of it is what I propose to be the gospel, just stuff that I have found useful in my own journey. Now, this one is one that I've been thinking about for a while because it gets a lot of discussion on the old interwebs. And it falls under the general heading of paint chemistry, but more specifically, what I want to talk about are paint thinners and what they do and what the options are and why you might choose one over the other. Now again, this is the kind of thing that might sound really elementary, like, you know, basic modeling skills, uh, trademark, <laughs> um, to a lot of you guys, but I know that there's a ton of confusion out there, and if you don't believe me, just spend some time in Facebook model making groups, and uh, about five minutes will pass before somebody asks a question about what kind of paint thinner should I use. So, we're going to get into all those, but first let's just talk basically about what thinners do. Um, you may also hear them called reducers, especially if you hang out with body shop guys. Um, and that's because thinning, uh, which really kind of means a reduction in the viscosity of a material, isn't necessarily the only thing that paint thinners do. And that's why sometimes you'll hear them called reducers. Um, it, let's just kind of look at a couple of examples. Okay. If, for example, I take this bottle of Mr. Paint, which is a lacquer, and I add some lacquer thinner to it out of this bottle, I'm really not going to change the viscosity very much because uh, if you've ever, as you know, if you've ever used Mr. Paint, you know it's already really thin. In fact, you might even increase the viscosity depending on the actual chemistry of what you're doing. You might find that if you thin with water, that it might be a little thicker than alcohol, for example. Don't quote me on that, I'm not a chemist. But the point is that you can reduce the concentration of the pigment and the binder in a paint by adding some thinner without actually affecting the viscosity. And what that's going to do is give you a less opaque layer when you start laying it down. And obviously the practical effect of that is that you're going to be able to see through it, which is good for pre-shading, black basing, things like that. But it also may mean that you need to add more layers to get the kind of coverage that you want. So it, that's more of a reduction type thing. Now on the other hand, if I take this bottle right here of Tamiya, which, as most of you know, is pretty thick. Uh, you know, uh, Gunn's uh, Mr. Color is a lacquer. It's also pretty thick in the bottle. You're not going to spray that stuff very successfully uh, out of your airbrush without actually reducing the viscosity or thinning it. And so that's what uh, adding some of this bottle of Tamiya Lacquer Thinner to some of this Tamiya acrylic paint is going to do for you. It's going to reduce the viscosity, but it is also going to reduce the concentration of the pigment. So you have to account for that. On the other hand, if I were to do a mixture of this Tamiya with this Mr. Paint, because I wanted a slightly different shade of one or the other, which I can do because this is a lacquer, and Tamiya's can be reduced with lacquer thinners. I can mix these two. That would reduce the viscosity of the Tamiya, but wouldn't necessarily reduce the volume of pigment and binder within the mix. So again, you can accomplish two or three different things there depending on what the actual things are that you're uh, putting into your airbrush cup. But look, 
What's really important at the end of the day for us as model makers is what gets us through the scary paint stage without any problems. And so what you really need to know for that, for that purpose is really what types of thinners can be mixed with what types of paint. And so that's what we're going to cover and we're going to get into uh, a whole array of different types of thinners. Um, so let's take a look. Okay, let's get into this and see if we can't make heads or tails out of all of these different kinds of paint thinners. As you can see, I've got uh, a pretty a broad range of them laid out here, going from least aggressive to um, sort of most aggressive. So, we'll just start over here with the good old dihydrogen monoxide also known as tap water. Now, that right there might cause some people some concern because they think you should use distilled water. I don't know, I can't think of any good reason to do that. Tap water seems to work fine for the things that, that, that water is good for. And what are those things? I primarily use water for things like chipping. Uh, to get a wet brush to help me uh, activate the hairspray or what other chip, whatever chipping fluid I'm using. But it can be used as a thinner and in fact is preferable for some types of paint. Obviously, a lot of the paints we use are water-based uh, in the acrylic category or what we call the acrylic. And a lot of people sort of confuse the term acrylic with meaning water-based when in fact it doesn't mean anything of the kind. Most of them just happen to be water-soluble. Things like Vallejo, AK, MIG, uh, Life Color, stuff like that seem to work pretty well with water. You can even thin Tamiya with water. Um, and, you know, you might want to do that. It creates a kind of a weak layer of paint, but if that needs to be part of your strategy, then you can, can do that. Uh, for example, if you want to chip Tamiya easily, then you can use water as, as a thinner. Mike Rinaldi is a, is a proponent of doing that. It's also pretty good if you're going to be uh, brush painting and you want to keep a wet palette. So there's really not a whole lot more to say about water. Water's water, we've all got it, and we all kind of know uh, what it does. Now, the, uh, the next thing is uh, going to be alcohol blended thinners because that's what a lot of our acrylics also can operate on. And in fact, some of our acrylics like Tamiya and Mr. Hobby are actually alcohol based uh, emulsion acrylics. Uh, but more on those details in a future video about paint chemistry. The bottom line is that these alcohol blended thinners are pretty good stuff for all things acrylic. This uh, Ultimate Modeling Products Airbrush Thinner is an alcohol blend that they say will work with every acrylic paint out there and so far I haven't found one that proves them wrong. It's handy stuff. Uh, don't have any idea exactly what's in it, um, unlike we do with uh, Tamiya X20A, which is their version of an alcohol blended thinner. Now, I forgot to include out here just a straight up bottle of isopropyl alcohol. A lot of guys like to use just regular, everyday, inexpensive IPA from the drugstore. I have some of it in my cabinet over here. I uh, just forgot to get it out, and it's like 13 bucks for uh, a couple of bottles. An IPA works okay. Uh, some people, however, make the mistake of thinking that IPA is a direct substitute for things like X20A. And you'll even hear people say, oh, X20A is nothing more than isopropyl alcohol. That is, in fact, not the case. Uh, Tamiya is actually 54% water, about 20% uh, what's called secondary butanol, which is a, a form of butyl alcohol about 10% uh, a different type of butanol. Uh, I'm not going to try and recite the, the full name of it. Um, and then it's about 15% normal propyl alcohol, which is basically the IPA. 
and then it's got some additives in there uh, that you know I suppose do things like help it you know help your paint flow better. At any rate, X20A is a blend of these various types of alcohol, which I'm sure they do for specific reasons based on the composition of Tamiya paints. Now, here's the thing about alcohol thinners, whether you're using the UMP, whether you're using X20A, whether you're using straight IPA, um, you may or may not get equivalent results between the three of them. And the reason why is because even though they're all essentially alcohols or blends of alcohols, the paints that we're using them with uh, are not all equal. Um, there's a hundred different recipes, I'm sure, at least, for what we call acrylic paint, and I put that in heavy quotes. Um, again, not going to get into all the particulars of that uh, with this video, but suffice it to say that what we call acrylics are basically mixtures of materials that uh, you know each manufacturer puts together to produce the results that they think are the best. But unlike your basic, um, you know, lacquer paint, they are not all exactly alike. And I'm not, you know, again, I'm not trying to say that lacquers are all exactly alike either. But they do seem to be more consistent than what we call acrylics. So just always keep that in mind when you are trying to decide which one of, of the alcohol-based thinners you might like to use with your acrylics. Um, you may or, you know, your mileage may vary is, is really all I need to say about that. Okay, now things get a little bit more interesting because here's where we get into um, some of the, uh, uh, you know, categories of thinner where we get mysteriously labeled products that are just called paint thinner. And this causes a problem. Now, if you read a little bit further down on this bottle, this can of paint thinner, you can see that it is, for oil-based paints, varnishes, and enamels, 100% mineral spirits. And that's the key thing here, is that it's 100% mineral spirits. What are mineral spirits? Basically, it's, uh, the distillate, it's a petroleum distillate. Um, and that's an important term that'll come up again here in a minute. Basically, it's a close cousin of things like kerosene and diesel. They are all made from the refining processes that start with a barrel of crude oil. And that's why mineral spirits smells so much like diesel. Now, the important thing is that, as it says here, it's for oil-based paints, varnishes, and enamels. And so what you're going to want to use this for is anything that says on the bottle contains mineral spirits. And I've got some examples of that up here. Uh, for example, some of the new AK Interactive Extreme Metal uh, paints. Those are enamels. Um, and they say right on the side of them, contains mineral spirits. Uh, you know, a lot of the old school paints from companies like Testers and Model Masters were enamels. Uh, for a long time, those were kind of the go-to paints uh, for model makers. And they're just fine. But the main thing is that they uh, are, are most often uh, thinned with enamel or, or with mineral spirits. Now, we'll uh, see in a second here how you can thin them with something else. But to branch out from the discussion of mineral spirits, this is where we get into uh, another category, which is odorless mineral spirits. And by the way, um, for you guys that are across the pond in the UK or even other places, mineral spirits are also known as white spirits in the UK. Uh, exact same thing. In other countries, they are sometimes called terps, which can get real confusing for a reason we'll see here in a second. Um, but mineral spirits are not turpentine. They are not alcohol related. They are purely a petroleum distillate. Unless, of course, you choose to use one of these so-called green thinners um, or odorless mineral spirits. Uh, a lot of guys like to use the Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits. If you're in the United States, you know, you get that at Hobby Lobby and they, you know, seem to like it. 
Um, the fact is that this stuff is still got a lot of mineral spirits in it. Um, if you can, if you can, if you look at the label here on the side, you'll see where it says contains petroleum distillates. That's what we were talking about before. Um, it says uh, down here a little lower, 65% less solvents used than regular clean strip paint thinner, blah, blah, blah. Max VOC, which stands for uh, volatile organic compounds, 30%. What you can basically interpret from this label is that this is about 30 or 35% good old fashioned mineral spirits, which is what it smells like and some type of an emulsifier to basically reduce its strength, but still allow it to work um, and, and not, you know, maybe be quite as, as harsh or aggressive. So, uh, and it also, I should point out, because a lot of guys say, well, I like to use this stuff because it's healthier and safer. Just look right here where it says uh, that just because it's flammable, no environmental benefits are claimed for this product beyond those specifically identified on the label. So, personally, I don't think you're getting away with much by using this stuff. You still have to smell it to a certain degree. Um, I've never used the Mona Lisa. Maybe it is truly odorless. But I can tell you that with this stuff, that it will act weird with some paints. And... That's why I prefer not to use this stuff, and, I, and, and just to keep it simple. I have no idea what's in this bottle, to tell you the truth. I'm just making guesses. Um, but I do know that this one right here is 100% mineral spirits, because it says so right on the front. And this, uh, and so that, that, you know, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. I don't have to worry about any kind of weird chemical reactions, because as long as my paint says that it contains mineral spirits, I know I can use this without any sort of weird reaction. But this does emphasize one of my pet peeves, which is when manufacturers just call something paint thinner. Um, and this is the case with a couple of popular brands of thinners made by Testers and Humbrol, where they call it basically enamel thinner. And so you get some, confu some confusion about what it is and what it can be used for. Um, I've got a screen cap of the material safety data sheet from the testers stuff right here on my iPhone that I'll show you so this will make a little bit more sense. If you look at this, you can see uh, that it contains a bunch of different things. Propylene glycol monopropyl ether being the majority of it, 95%. It also says down there, you'll notice on the fourth line, aromatic petroleum distillates. That's our mineral spirits. Now, uh, uh, also I should say that you'll see there it says naphthalene. Naphthalene is also another, just another version of mineral spirits. And in some countries, mineral spirits are just called naphtha. Uh, that's an old school term for petroleum distillate. Anyway, if you look at the similar description from the Humbrol stuff, you'll see that it is about 25%, if I remember correctly, uh, mineral spirits, and then also has the propylene glycol monopropyl ether in it. That is, uh, has become a sort of a popular new solvent for paints, uh, as some of these other old school solvents have become... Uh, you know, like public enemy number one because of environmental concerns. And states like California have started to uh, try and get manufacturers of these materials to reduce the volume of, of volatile or organic uh, compounds in them. So that's probably why you'll see some manufacturers like testers just call it enamel thinners because... Um, given that there's such a small percentage of mineral spirits in it, they can't really justify calling it that. Um, but the point is that uh, it is made to be used with enamels, at, at a minimum to be used with testers enamels, and um, you may or may not get away with it in other enamels or oils. Again, it go, it's just like the, uh, the thing with alcohol thinners that we were talking about before, you know, your mile, mileage may vary depending on what brand of paint you are using.
because testers is going to formulate their enamel thinners to work best with their enamels, and I would assume that Humbrol is going to do the same thing. Okay, now let's go to the next distillate that often gets talked about in conjunction with oil paints. And that is this, pure gum spirits of turpentine. Good old fashioned turpentine. Now, what turpentine is, is basically it's distilled pine sap. Um, that's, you know, it, it's something that's been around forever. Um, how they ever figured out that that works as a solvent is beyond me, but hey, it works good and smells nice. Now, some people, like Mike Rinaldi, again, uh, really prefer turpentine when they work with oils. Um, I have found that I don't like it as much. This is a little bit uh, harsher than regular old mineral spirits, and I have found that it can affect uh, things like uh, Tester's Dull Coat, for example, which is my ungloss of choice. I know that I can work with oils on top of Tester's Dull Coat using mineral spirits as a, as a thinner for when I want to do a wash or something of that nature without harming that layer of Dull Coat. But I have found that with turpentine that it's not quite as forgiving. So, some word of caution there. Rinaldi says that it works better for him in getting the oil paints to move around when he's doing uh, oil paints, you know, blending and so forth, and that may or may not be true. I, I personally haven't really come to that conclusion, but I'm not nearly as experienced with oil paints as he is. So, no gospel there. Now, again, this is where some terminology can get confusing because you'll hear people talk about terps, and I'm sure that that word came from turpentine. There is another one that gets thrown around a lot, uh, which is terpenoid. And terpenoid sometimes gets just used uh, just as a general description of any of the above. <laughs> and it can be really confusing, but the fact is, terpenoid is a proprietary artificial turpentine made by the Weber company. Um, it's a blend, uh, again, of who knows what. It's a lot uh, like, uh, you know, or at least in the similar vein as this uh, environmentally friendly paint thinner. Again, I don't use it. Uh, I have no idea what's in it um, and I don't, you know, really have any need to. But when you see uh, the term terpenoid, you know, or somebody says, hey, I just use terpenoid, it's always worth asking the question uh, as to whether or not they meant actual terpenoid, which is a brand name, or if that's just sort of their slang term for uh, any of the above. Okay, now, the next thing that we get to is lacquer thinner. And um, again, things get a little bit more interesting if you are, you know, real nerdy about this stuff like I am. Again, this is a category that tends to just be generalized as if it's all one thing as if all lacquer thinners are created equal, but they're not. If you look at this can of inexpensive hardware store lacquer thinner, and let's see if we can find some places where it talks about the ingredients, uh, you'll see, okay, right here, contains acetone, ethyl acetate, methanol, petroleum distillates, and toluene. Now, each of those things are uh, solvents in what I think most people consider the traditional sense of the word. That's a little bit of a, of a pet peeve for chemistry guys because really any, any liquid can be a solvent. I mean, look, water is a solvent if you're a sugar cube. But when we're talking about hot solvents, meaning things that will attack like plastics, then all of the ingredients that I just uh, read off are solvents when it comes to plastic and paint, which really, modern acrylic paints uh, are basically just liquid plastic. What? What does that mean, Pattison? Again, not going to get into all that in this video, but trust me when I say that all the paints that we use, whether they are what we call acrylics, whether they're enamels, whether they're lacquers, they all contain a form of an acrylic resin base. Um, acrylic is a polymer family that's, that covers a lot of different specific material formulations. And that's why uh, 
and that's why it can be used in all of these different formulations. Now, anyway, back to thinners, since that's what we're here to talk about. All of these materials are solvents, and so, in, a, in theory, you could separate them all out from here and use any one of them as a thinner. I, I saw it the other day, a guy talking about how he thins his uh, lacquer paints with acetone. Well, you could do that. Uh, why you would want to is kind of beyond me, but hey, it is possible. The point being with talking about all of these different ingredients is that different lacquer thinners are created uh, differently based on the desired results by using different combinations of these ingredients, okay? So, uh, for example, um, what you can kind of, of think about with lacquer thinners is that they're divided up into like slow, medium, and fast, or uh, high temperature, medium temperature, and low temperature. And what that means is that they basically change the ratios of the different materials inside to uh, cause the lacquer thinner to be more or less aggressive, hotter, shall we say, um, and to have a lower or higher flash point, which, which you know, is its, is, is its flammability. But more importantly to us is to change the speed that it evaporates at a given temperature. I've got another little chart right here. This is going to be difficult for you to see, but this shows um, kind of some different compositions of la different lacquer thinners based on the temperature ranges that they're meant to operate at. So, for example, if you have a thinner that's designed to operate at pretty much normal room temperatures, that's your basic everyday lacquer thinner. And it contains um, more uh, toluene, for example, because it evaporates faster than some of these other things do. And as you guys all know, this regular old lacquer thinner evaporates really quickly. Now, what we have with Tamiya lacquer thinners and Mr. Color Leveling Thinner are thinners that are formulated to be slower. So they would be more like these thinners down here that are designed to operate at higher temperatures. And they have a high component of a material called butyl acetate. And butyl acetate is basically the retarder, uh, I believe, that's in thinners like Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And that's good for us because not only does it um, give us a, a, a lacquer thinner that's a little bit less aggressive on things like plastic. I mean, look, you can take this stuff on a Q-tip and if you rub it on the surface of a styrene uh, model airplane wing, you're going to damage the plastic. Not so with material with, with either the Mr. Color Leveling Thinner or the Tamiya Lacquer Thinner. In fact, I use Tamiya Lacquer Thinner a lot for uh, cleaning up um, when I, when I uh, want to use something like uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 as a filler, for example, because you can fill in the gap that you're dealing with and then just use some Tamiya Lacquer Thinner on a Q-tip to wash away the excess and just leave filler down inside of the crack or the seam line or whatever it is without actually harming the plastic around it. So it's good from that perspective. It's also good because as this is called a leveling thinner, the fact that it flashes more slowly allows paint to kind of flow out and smooth itself over before it basically freezes up and dries. And so it helps you achieve a nice smooth finish as lots of people have found out. And while both of these work really well, in uh, pretty much every lacquer I've ever tried them in, um, but especially like Tamiya uh, paints, um, the Mr. Color Leveling Thinner produces an, just a magically smooth and beautiful finish. Um, and you can use it in lots of things. So it produces uh, a very versatile and useful thinner for us. Okay, so I hopefully uh, that gives you a nice brief overview of what all of these different thinners 
uh, contain and what they can be used for. I mentioned before um, that uh, enamel paints would come up again later and that's because you can also thin enamels with uh, lacquer thinners. Again, result, your results may vary, but I know lots of guys who thin their old school enamels with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner and have really good luck with it. So, just to kind of wrap it up, water and alcohol uh, and alcohol blends are for acrylic paints only, uh, or what we call acrylics. Water-based acrylics and alcohol-based acrylics like Tamiya. Mineral spirits is only for enamels and oils. That's it. Not good for anything else. Lacquer thinners can be used with any kind of lacquer paint, any kind of enamel paint, and, and this is going to get a little confusing because I mentioned before that there are guys who use it with Tamiya and Mr. Hobby. And you might say, well, how can you do that? Uh, those are allegedly acrylics, even though they are alcohol blended acrylics. The simple answer for right now is that Tamiya and Mr. Hobby are formulated in such a way that their resin base works as a, a, an acrylic paint the way that other acrylics paint do, uh, acrylic paints do when you thin it with water or alcohol, but it sort of magically converts itself into a lacquer if you thin it with a lacquer thinner. So that's one reason why Tamiya paint and Mr. Hobby paint are so popular because you can thin them with so many different things. So again, I hope that kind of gives you guys some clarification uh, about all of the different thinners that are available out there and what you can use them for. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully that wasn't too exhausting. Um, <laughs> As always, I'm you know trying to give you guys a, a, a pretty thorough look at whatever these subjects are. Um, but uh, at any rate, I hope that it was useful. If you've got questions or ever had questions about uh, you know what kind of paint thinners you can use with certain kinds of paint, I think it's really valuable knowledge because painting should be predictable. Uh, it should be like a golf swing. Basically, it should work for you every single time you do it. And a big part of that, in my opinion, is knowing your paint chemistry. And uh, that obviously involves knowing what kind of thinners you can use. So, again, I hope it was helpful. Uh, if, you know, uh, if you've stuck with me this far, I appreciate you watching. As always, take care. Much love.